Nearly 10 years ago, the world was graced with two affordable, lightweight rear-wheel drive sports cars. Both the Scion FRS and the Subaru BRZ quickly developed a cult following because of their tunability. In fact, they were so popular with enthusiasts that both Subaru and Toyota decided to follow it up with a next generation. Today, I'm with the all-new version from Toyota. This is the 2022 Toyota GR86, and to prove that this is still an affordable track car, Toyota has brought me out to Monticello Motor Club just outside of New York City with the all new 2022 GR86. It sports, more, most importantly, more power underneath the hood because of a larger 2.4 liter engine, still available with a six speed manual transmission. So if you guys have been in the market for an affordable rear drive sports car like this, is the all new 2022 GR86 worth a look? Stay tuned to find out. So for the all new second generation of the GR86, Toyota decided to address the one complaint that enthusiasts had, and that was under the hood. Because we have a new engine this year that adds roughly 20% more horsepower and 20% more torque. Now, of course, it's still a boxer flat four because this is a car that's still co-developed with Subaru. However, the, some of the engine technology does come from Toyota. This is a larger 2.4 liter naturally aspirated boxer flat four. What Toyota adds is their D4S. That's with direct and port injection. The engine is, like I said, 20% larger and it bumps horsepower up to 228. That's a bump of 23 horsepower. And torque is now 184. That's 28 pound feet of torque. So that's a significant increase for a vehicle that doesn't weigh very much. And the best thing about this new motor is it still revs all the way up to 7,500 RPM. It still only comes with rear wheel drive with a standard limited slip differential and you can get it with a six-speed manual or a six-speed automatic. Now, the fuel economy of this engine did go down slightly for this new generation. This manual transmission that I'm showing you is rated to get 19 in the city, 26 on the highway. That's roughly a two MPG reduction. The automatic will do slightly better at 22 in the city, 30 on the highway. Because it's got more power, Subaru and Toyota says the performance has improved. This manual will get to 60 in around 6.1 seconds. The automatic will do it in 6.6. .6. And curb weight, because the structure is roughly the same, they've used aluminum for the doors, the fenders, and the roof. This vehicle weighs in at just over 2,800 pounds. Now, once you get past what's new under the hood, let's talk about the new styling for this vehicle because I think Toyota did a fantastic job with the redesign of this car. I see a lot of lines here that remind me of Porsche, some that remind me of even Acura's NSX, the current generation. And really what Toyota has created here is a better looking car for me, at least in my opinion, compared to the new BRZ. I'll actually be driving the new BRZ in two weeks, uh, which has a slightly different front fascia. Now, the beauty about the new GR86 is the fact that all of them come standard with full LED uh, lighting on the outside. The headlights, you have an LED turn signal, LED daytime running light, LED low and high beams. This premium model actually has swiveling adaptive headlights. So that's a really nice premium touch that the old one did not have. Even the rear is completely uh, LED, so you don't have to deal with any of those cheap incandescent bulbs. I love the front end that Toyota put on the GR86. You have a nice GR badge over here. Remember, GR stands for Gazoo Racing. And I also really like the the grille. This is kind of like a mesh hexagonal design for the grille. Um, you have some functional vents here. Everything in here is pretty much functional. Toyota didn't want to put any fake vents. And I also really like how the front end is a little bit cleaner and a little bit more attractive looking for me versus the BRZ. Now this one here is painted in the uh, shade of track red. This is the signature color that Toyota is launching and it's the Subaru version is known internal or known for its blue color. So this one is the red exterior color. And it, when it comes to the dimensions, Toyota didn't make this vehicle any bigger in terms of the wheelbase and the width. Its overall length is 167.9 inches long, which is about an inch longer than the previous generation. Uh, but it's actually a smidge taller in height and the width, like I said, stays the same. The rear track also has gotten a little bit wider, wider because Toyota wants to give this car a little bit more of a track capable feel versus its Subaru cousin. Now let's talk about the wheels. This premium model that I'm showing you has a really attractive set of 7, 18 inch wheels, which are black finish. They're wrapped in 215 wide tires. These are Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires. So this is a summer tire. The non-premium versions, the base will have a 17 inch wheel with a slightly different finish. This design, Toyota says, is inspired by Japanese swords. It's a really nice looking wheel. It goes in the theme with a lot of other manufacturers uh, with the trend of black wheels. I also like the black uh, side mirror caps that you get uh, on the GR86. The one thing that is missing still is no sunroof. You can't get a sunroof. I kind of wish Toyota would offer a sunroof or do kind of a black painted roof. That's something that of course you can add in the aftermarket. And then there's also a couple of things here. There are these uh, little uh, flares in here in the rear quarter panel. This Toyota says actually is functional. It helps with stability at high speeds. 
uh, and also helping to kind of channel the air around the vehicle to give this vehicle uh, better stability at higher speeds, like I said. Now, in terms of the brakes, these are 11.4 inch rotors in the back. It's all disc. Toyota does not offer the Brembo brakes that they had on the previous generation, although that was a TRD accessory. I'm imagining they may return that as this vehicle goes on for later special editions. Now, looking at the rear, I think this is also a really attractive angle. I love the design of the new taillights. Some of you have mentioned it looks kind of similar to an Acura NSX. I do see that here in the design of the rear taillights. They kind of have like a C shape. You have LED turn signals you can see. You have LED tag lights. I love this duckbill spoiler. This is part of the premium model and you can't get this on the Subaru BRZ. It really makes the look of this car stand out, especially when you look at it from the side, you can really see how much it flares upwards and gives this car a really aggressive look. Um, you also have a nice big GR86 badge over there. And then down here in the lower bumper, you have the signature dual outlet chrome exhaust tips, which this motor is a bigger engine. So let's fire it up so you guys can hear how it sounds. for a factory exhaust that sounds pretty good so in the aftermarket i'm sure tuners will make this thing sound even louder but it's okay for a factory sound now opening up the trunk the uh, trunk size remains roughly the same toyota says you get around 6.2 cubic feet of space that's actually a reduction of around 0.5 so it's still pretty good this seat back here still folds down and it folds down in one piece so all you have to do is just pull on this strap over here and pull on the other strap over here you can see that folds down and you can still fit four additional tires and wheels in here. So if you guys plan to do any track day stuff, this is something that you can't do in a Miata because it doesn't have this much trunk capacity. That's one of the reasons why enthusiasts love this car as a daily driver and as a track car. So let's go ahead and take a look at the interior of the all new 2022 GR86. First of all, here's the key fob for the vehicle. As you can see, their smart key access system with push button start is standard. This is actually a Subaru key. You can see this is the same smart key Subaru uses, but with a Toyota logo. So all you have to do to get in the vehicle is just touch the door handle and that'll open the door and that'll unlock the door for you. Now, looking at the interior of this one, you can see I've switched to a premium model and the premium version gives you kind of a two-tone Alcantara uh, with the leatherette interior or the leather interior with the contrasting stitching. This is kind of like the lighter silver ice interior. It's still mostly black. Um, you have to like really a black interior a darker interior color combination because Toyota doesn't offer a brighter color, at least for now. The seats themselves have been redesigned. They have a little bit more aggressive bolstering. You can see it's a six-way manual adjustment, four-way on the passenger side. Toyota doesn't offer power seats, nor do they offer memory seats, but the seats are at least heated on this premium model, which is definitely nice. You can see the steering wheel also is a newer design, along with the overall dashboard design of the interior. But getting inside, you can see this vehicle still feels nice and low, which is what you expect in a vehicle in this segment. And then when I shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember the chassis, the platform hasn't changed uh, compared to the previous generation. Now to start it up, there's a button over here where you'd expect it to be. And because it's a manual, you have to put the clutch in. You can see the gauges do a really cool little graphic at startup. And this is a seven inch digital display with a more traditional uh, display over there that shows the uh, engine temperature and your fuel gauge, of course. This display is slightly customizable. I'll come back to that in just a moment. You can see Apple CarPlay, wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is included. You can see there's uh, the system as it comes up. The 2020 model did offer CarPlay. Toyota finally added it as a late addition, but this system here is the newer Subaru head unit, as you can see, uh, and it's pretty snappy, it's responsive. It's not what I would say like class leading. It's not like amazing tech, but it's finally caught up to what you expect in today's modern cars. When I put the car into reverse, you can see there's a backup camera, just a traditional backup camera. It does have trajectory now, but no 360 top-down camera, but overall, this is pretty good. Now, in terms of the materials, this premium version does have some upgraded stuff in here. You can see there's Alcantara here on this upper portion, hard touch plastic over here, padded area right here on the armrest pad. The window controls are automatic up-down for both front, which is nice. Hard touch plastic over here, but this portion here is a soft touch injection molded plastic with some Alcantara on the instrument panel hood. This is also a hard touch plastic. So it's pretty much what I expect. This is not a luxury interior by any means. Now, in terms of the driving position, you can see the steering wheel is tilt and, tilt and telescoping, which is nice. Uh, and I can kind of get in and, and find a good driving position. The seat is height adjustable, but it would be nice if Toyota would have added a power seat. The gauge display here, you can see, I can kind of adjust it based on pushing this little button here where I can change 
um, different performance screens. You can also go to your trip computer. You can go to your settings, your music information. That of course is what you expect. If I push and hold this button over here, this is the track mode the track mode basically, which puts the stability control uh, in an offset. You can see the tack changes. It puts the gear position indicator uh, right at the top. And you can see you know, your lap times, your engine and oil uh, temperatures, which is all very important stuff. This looks a lot more modern, but it doesn't look as fancy as some of the you know, all digital displays you'll find in a lot more expensive competitors, which is fine. But this interior you can see is mostly a Subaru design, especially with the way this head unit is designed. Down here you can see there's now dual zone climate control. You have separate buttons um, and knobs, of course, for your temperature. The six-speed manual has been improved this year with improved uh, synchros, a shorter throw. Um, it's just an easier transmission to use, which I'll talk about in the driving position or the driving scene. You can see over here there's two level heated seats, which the switches look like they come out of every other Subaru product. Down here the plastic does feel a little bit cheap. Um, but you know nothing more than nothing less than what I expect from a car in this price range. I like how it's a manual handbrake with leather stitching, and you can see there's a nice area here where you can put your phone, cup holders, and there's a nice padded area here uh, for an armrest. Uh, over here on the glove compartment, you can see it's a pretty big size. It's damped but not lined with felt, and overall visibility is fine in this vehicle. I just wish that Toyota would have considered adding a sunroof. The headliner has a decent material, and there's surprisingly no LED lighting in here. For the premium model, I was kind of expecting that. But overall, the cabin isn't too you know, unfamiliar from what you're used to, but Toyota has finally put a decent you know, infotainment system over here and a decent instrument panel over here to finally make this car feel like it's a much more modern sports car. And if you guys go for the automatic version, I have the manual. It does include Subaru's EyeSight technology, which is adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking, and you can also get blind spot monitoring with your cross traffic alert, which isn't available on the manual. So you've got to go to the automatic if you want those safety tech features. Now, this vehicle does still have a back seat, and just to show you guys how impractical the back seat is, I'm gonna get back here at five foot seven. <laughs> Toyota says you get around 29.9 inches of legroom back here. This is with the seat kind of coming back to the position after you slide it forward. There's probably a lot less legroom in the front, but as you can see here, I do fit back here, but I kind of have to kink my head over to the left because my hair is touching the ceiling. Um, the seats themselves, they're pretty narrow uh, and you don't really have an armrest over here. So again, the back seat isn't exactly what I'd say practical to carry two of your friends. You could put people you really don't like back here, but mostly you're just gonna fold this down and use it for cargo, or you can also put a backpack or maybe a package back here. And this is something that you cannot get in a Miata. All right. First hot lap in the 2022 Toyota GR86. We're in track mode. <laughs> and you hear it, this thing has a really nice noise to let you know that you need to shift. <laughs> the one thing they could add is active rev matching, but wow, feel the chassis and the steering in this car. Fantastic. It's a possible little car as like it's always been but they've made this car even more track capable is what Toyota says <laughs> I mean the suspension in this car just stays incredibly flat and the engine still loves to rev but it has so much more usable torque I do think Toyota needs to consider offering the Brembo brakes again. <laughs> really nice power. I'm very impressed. I haven't gotten this car out on the street yet, but I love the sound and the pull that this engine gives you. Fantastic. with this car it is so much fun and it's just right out of the off the showroom floor it just feels so good out here unbelievable looking forward to taking this out on the uh, the road because on the track it feels like it was built purpose-built for it so to kick off our street drive I'm actually in a non-premium with the six-speed manual which means we've got the 17 inch wheels with the Prius tires. And with the, when you have the Prius tires, that means the car will get a little bit more sideways than a premium, which has the summer tires. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> wow. Huge difference with this motor versus the two liter. There's just so much more flexibility, so much more low end torque that you don't get in the two liter. Ooh, that's really nice. Like the way that feels a lot. <laughs> so much fun, wow. Wow, that's really great. I like the way this engine sounds. I mean, the noise is definitely being synthesized. Remember, this is now a 2.4 liter Boxer flat four, 20% larger displacement. And you hear a lot of induction howl. And Subaru says, Subaru, Toyota says this car should get to 60 in 6.1 seconds, which is almost a full second quicker than the previous generation with the two liter. The manual is also really good. It doesn't have active rev matching, but it does a great job with its close ratios. Oh, this engine just loves to rev all the way to 7,500. And the beauty thing about this, this motor as well is the torque curve is now re realized at like 3,700 RPM. It's like 2,700 RPM less versus the previous two liter. And as we find some corners here, you really feel just how playful and light this car is. I mean, Toyota and Subaru should be commended considering the fact that they had to add all this safety tech into it. They had to add more features and it just feels like a lightweight car. The, the feel of the first generation is completely preserved, which is nice. Let's go ahead and try a zero to 60 run in this. <laughs> wheel spin, wheel spin. <laughs> and I got 6.8 seconds there, but I also kind of missed a shift. I didn't really miss a shift, but I was uh, a little late to shift and I hit the rev limiter. So 6.88 is not bad, but you also heard there's more tire spin. I'll try this run again with the premium model with the stickier summers. Uh, but what a joy to drive. This, this car reminds me why I love driving so much. Why as an enthusiast, you gotta favor lightweight cars. You gotta love a manual transmission. And even though it's not fast on, like on, on the numbers, this car feels a lot fit quicker than its numbers would suggest. And that's kind of the whole beauty about this car is the, the feel. Let's try it again. <laughs> just left two black lines on there. <laughs> and I just got 6.6 .6 seconds there, leaving two black lines. This car just likes to get sideways. It's so much fun and it's so controllable. Oh. <laughs> Now, I may take the automatic out later. The automatic, uh, Toyota says, will do it in 6.6 uh, 6 seconds, which is almost a second and a half faster. So you can't discount the automatic. And Toyota says about 70% of buyers who buy this car actually take the, the automatic. But man, the manual is such a joy. And the beauty about this car, again, is the ride quality is also pretty good. You know, even I have it in track mode here, this doesn't have any kind of fancy adaptive dampers, but with the 17 inch wheels, you do notice that the ride is pretty comfortable. It's a really easy car to daily because it's so controllable, it's so comfortable, it's so quiet. Well, not quiet, but it's so smooth. And now with that enlarged engine, like I can leave it in third, just plant my foot. You feel the torque of this motor. It's good and it wants to keep pulling. This is exactly what made the, the motor upgrade in the 2012 Civic Si so good when they went from the two liter to the 2.4. It's kind of the same principle here. Um, but the Boxer engine just is a joy and you really feel the low center of gravity. I mean, Toyota said that they made the center of gravity, like, I think a half inch lower for this new generation. The hood, the roof, the front fenders are made of aluminum. Really, really impressive. And in, in an SUV world, the fact that Toyota is still offering this along with Subaru, you have to give them bonus points here. This is fantastic. One thing I don't like is it's got that return to center feel here for the turn signal stock. I'm not a big fan of that. Still in track mode. Much better there. All right, I got 6.56 seconds there. That's my third run with the non-premium with the 17 inch tires, the Prius tires. 
Obviously, this is not fast in the sense that, like, you know, you're going to be smoked by a lot of family sedans still. Although this does feel considerably faster. I'm just impressed. I'm really impressed with how this car dynamically is so balanced. It's so poised. It's got a great sounding motor. It's got a great shifter and transmission. Good clutch. I used to always prefer the Miata to drive, and I still do because it's a convertible, but this is right up right up there in terms of driving dynamics. And if you don't want that top-down feeling, you don't want that exposed feeling, you want more of a, more room, this is really in a class of its own, along with the BRZ. All right, so now to show you guys the differences in the premium version with the stickier tires, I'm gonna try another zero to 60 acceleration time. I'm still in a six-speed manual model. I'm in track mode right now. And let's see if I can launch this vehicle a little bit harder versus the uh, non-premium. Definitely sticks better. It sticks better as I can launch the car a little harder, but I still got zero to 60 in 6.66 seconds there. Uh, that was with a completely flat surface, so. The stickier tires don't necessarily mean on the street you're gonna get better zero to 60. This is going to be something that you have to time exactly right. You know, have to get it right on, you know, on a track prepped surface to get that 6.1, but still, with the stickier tires, I'm definitely noticing the limits are higher on this one. And I also love the way that duckbill spoiler looked at, looks out of the rearview mirror. It's a really nice look. It doesn't really impede your view. It just reminds you you're driving a car that is a sports car. And it certainly does feel like a sports car. As I go around these curves here, this engine just loves to have its neck wrung out. The steering is a little bit on the light side. I was expecting the steering to feel a little heavier in track mode like this. Uh, it's still very quick and precise, but the feel is a little bit not quite as good as the previous generation from what I remember. The brakes feel about the same. They have a slightly more aggressive uh, pad material this year, but I would like to see Toyota offer their Brembo brakes again, like they offered on the previous generation. But remember, this is supposed to be an entry-level car that you're gonna build, you're gonna wanna add your own features to. <laughs> I know Toyota says that 70% of the uh, people who, who buy this car take the automatic but buy the manual. Seriously, buy the manual. You're doing yourself a disservice by not getting the stick. So here at Monticello Motor Club, this is really a great track for something like the GR86 because it offers a lot of technical turns. It offers a lot of curves. It has a lot of space as well, although this is a car that you really can enjoy wringing the crap out of because it's still a very tail-happy car, as you guys saw. It still has a great six-speed manual shifter. It still has a balance to it that a lot of enthusiasts really demand, and that's really the whole point of this car. The old one, while it was getting a little long on the tooth, there wasn't really too much wrong with it aside from the horrible tech, which Toyota has updated this year, thankfully, with that new interior. The styling of the old one was starting to also get a little bit too like I've seen it before. And this new one is a beautiful looking car, especially in the track red with this duckbill spoiler. I'm really obsessed with the way this car looks out on the road and out on the track. And really, for those of you who've been waiting for a new version of this car and you didn't necessarily buy the old one, now is the time to do it because the fact that Toyota and Subaru is giving us an all new version of a sports car in a crossover world just kind of blows my mind because this car, while Toyota hasn't announced final pricing just yet of the new GR86. They have promised this will start at under $30,000. The old one was around $27,000 and around 30 for the premium or the GT version. I'm, I'm gonna estimate this is gonna be right around $28,000, $29,000. Perhaps the premium model will be right around $32,000. It's still a great deal and it makes this car technically less expensive versus a higher trim version of a Miata and also much more practical. The only problem, of course, the top doesn't go down, but some of you may be wondering, I had an ND Miata for a few years. Would I still buy the Miata? Probably yes, because I like convertibles, but this car now drives just as good as the Miata. But for those of you who hate convertibles and you need a little bit more trunk and back seat space, this is now an excellent addition. And I think it's now finally better looking versus the Subaru BRZ, which I will be driving in the next couple of weeks. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2022 Toyota GR86. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.